Hi friends, it's Leah, Aviatrix Stitcher on Instagram. If you're new or you're returning, thanks for being here. I really enjoy the interactions that I have here on FlossTube. Um, I've been watching FlossTube for about a year, and I've only been making videos since March, I think. Um, but it's been... Um, it's been so wonderful to make connections with people who who care about um, the needle arts to the same level that I do um, and take interest. I love to take interest in other people's work. I love that other people take interest in mine. It's, um, it's just a great place to be and so whether you're making videos or not, you are special to me. So thank you so much. Um, with that, um, I have a few things to talk about today. It's a new, trying out a new situation because I'm trying to utilize my table to put stuff. So we'll see. I'm still, I'm still trying to figure out what the best uh, filming situation is going to be for me, but. Anyway, here we are. Um, I have some whips to show you, one of which is a new start. Um, I have some purchases to show you, two of which I made in Seattle on my recent visit there. Uh, I am the happy receiver of two gifts, and I have a pass of stash. So I want to try to keep this brief today. Um, I do have a limited time, amount of time. I have to go pick up my son from daycare after this, so I want to start with my Passa Stash. Um, I'm giving away this pattern. Um, I loved stitching this, and uh, I hope whoever you know, whoever gets it, also loves it as much as I do. Um, so EJ Creates on Instagram shared this app called Tiny Decision tiny decisions and it's so much fun you put a list of things on this app and it turns it into a pinwheel and you just and it spins and it shows you um, yeah, I'll show you anyway there are 23 people interested in this chart so I put it on this app whoops put it on this app and you can see I have two lists, one for Arbitrary August and one for my Pass the Stash. So I'm just going to go ahead and boop. Now, look at that colorful wheel. And we will see here who gets it. Okay, so Jody Saladino. It's yours, if you want it. Um, so, get in touch with me. If you have Instagram, you can send me a private message there. Otherwise, um, we can email or however. Um, but I will comment on your comment if you don't comment first here on this one. Um, so, congratulations. Okay, now, what should we do? Um, I think I'm gonna show you my whips. In July, I was doing Christmas in July, almost exclusively. Um, and I, I, uh, I was really strict with myself about it. I don't know why. I, well, actually, I, I do, I have this stocking that I want to get done before Christmas. I don't know if it's going to happen, but this is my candy cane, candy cane Santa. I'm making it for myself, and I'm going to put my name on it at the top. I would like to get this done by Christmas, but I, I, I don't know if I can because this is how far I am now, and um, I still haven't done any back stitching. So, um, since you saw it last, uh, I filled in a lot of this um, green 
filled in a lot of this green in the tree and I filled in some of the window pane. I did a little bit here. Um, that's about it. But all of this needs to be backstitched still. And I don't have I don't have all of the top done yet. So I'm running out of time, running out of steam. I've just been trying to whittle away on this. Um, if I don't finish it by Christmas, I'm not going to cry about it or anything. Uh, but I do have other stockings in the lineup, so <laughs> can't start them before I finish this. Okay, um, when I was on the plane to Seattle, I worked on my polar bear, uh, polar bear's Mill Hill kit. This is what it looks like. It's a perforated paper. And it's still just white, so it's going to be kind of hard to see. But that's that's about how much I didn't I didn't do a whole lot extra. Just like I think this part is what I filled in on the airplane. My return flight was uh, red eye. There was no stitching on there. So not not a whole lot of progress on that, but that's okay. I'm just doing it for funsies, doing it for myself. Um I tried something new. Actually I tried tried two new things. First thing I tried is a long stitch kit. This is Winter Through the Window. Um, this is interesting. I've never done long stitch kit. I've, I've, kit. I've never done long stitch before. And the challenging aspect of long stitch for me is that this is printed onto the canvas. And the pattern is more of a reference um i don't know if you can see it's like blobby and it does the this pattern does have a 10 by 10 grid printed on it for re more reference but the print doesn't line up so um i don't know if you can tell but like right here you see this area? Um, it just right this triangle. It gets one one strand thicker than the top, and I'm just hoping that once it's all done, nobody will notice. But I notice, and it really is an exercise in. Um, It's an exercise in letting it go. Um, I think I think a lot of us as cross stitchers are perfectionists, and it's hard to let things have a mistake or to have a messy back or something. Um, so this this project is really kind of. Um, testing me there but um, I don't know it's it's pretty fun it probably won't come out again until it starts snowing but um, let's see I also have folk Santa and this in my last video I had um, I had asked for well reassurance really um, I am doing con a conversion from yellow to blue, and this is all yellow. It's all yellow and red, but I'm going to make it blue and red and purple. Blue and purple and red. Um, <clears throat> color conversions are just pretty tricky, um, especially if you don't have a master set of flosses. And I've run into this with Tempting Tangles, like... 
Tempting Tangles uses, um, well, designs their patterns for fancy flosses. But if you don't want to spend all that money on the fancy floss, you want to do DMC because it's more affordable. Um, it's just really hard to do a color conversion if you don't have a master set of fancy flosses. And if you don't have a local needle workshop, then you're really screwed. Because then, you know, you just end up going online and trying to see uh, and the online color of these fancy flosses and try to match them to your DMC. But that can be really hard because some, some colors just don't photograph well. And then a lot of times the pictures are just teeny tiny. And uh, anyway, I'm rambling now and I think maybe a lot of you have already run into this problem. So this is old news, but anyway, I'm just saying it's, it's, um, it's frustrating. It can be really frustrating and it can really mess with your confidence because uh, you don't know what you're doing or you don't feel like you know what you're doing. <sighs> anyway. I've spent hours doing this color conversion. So far, um, I just did the background. I just started on the background. I was starting to feel super anxious about, about the color conversion. So I just decided to start with the background just to give myself a taste of um, if these three colors work together. And I think they do. I think it's turning out fine. So, um, I'm feeling a lot better about about the decisions I've been making and thanks to a lot of you really um, thanks for giving me so much encouragement and support um, I was also really on the fence about whether I should do the Santa um, in two strands of floss or just one because I'm doing this on 40 count over two um, and ultimately, I am, I have decided to do it one, one strand, so one over two. And the thing that really pushed me over the fence is that when I was talking to Kristen at Lilypad Revivals about this, um, she doesn't stitch on 40 count, but she, she does have a project where she's using too many flosses, like too many strands of floss for the count. Um, and so it's getting bulky and she has fractional stitches and she regrets using, I think she's using three strands over two on 28 count. And uh, she, she just, she regrets using three strands. Um, and I think ultimately, you know, one strand you could maybe go over if you really wanted to, you could go back and, and re-stitch but I think I think one over one is gonna be uh, one over two is gonna be fine I do have fractionals on this so ultimately that was that was the advice that put me over the edge definitely because I just I don't want to deal with bulk and regret <laughs> so anyway there's that and let's see the last one I can show you is not Christmas. It is Max's Moon. Um, not making as much progress on this as I would like um, because it's sort of boring visually um, to do white on black. And there's a lot of white on black. So I'm just trying to finish the moon. I'm just trying to finish the moon. Um, before the end of summer, because once stall, uh, once fall starts, I'm gonna have to start um, this little branch with the leaves, because Becca and I are doing this together, um, stitching Becca, and. Uh, so August has started and with August comes arbitrary August um, Sarah the stitching mommy 
is um, she wanted to do something totally random for August um, and she wanted to she wanted to just not plan her projects but to let just to let randomness decide her projects or um, I don't know that's not a very good explanation but anyways um, so I thought I would participate but not with all of my whips just with a select few so um, this this month I am only working on my my candy cane Santa stocking, my red workhouse, which I didn't work out on at all last month because it wasn't Christmas themed. Um, my mystery stitch for my friend Sarah Lambert, um, Adam's Menagerie, Window and Garden, and X's Moon. So I put those projects on the Tiny Decisions app and I am going to let that decide um, what to stitch every day that I can stitch. Um, and so far, I'm uh, one for one because yesterday I started Arbitrary August and I didn't like what it selected and I have just been itching to work on Adam's Menagerie. So I just said, I'm just going to stitch this because this is what I want to stitch. So I added the Rhino. Boop. So oh, that's coming along. Oh yeah, and I, so then after, um, yeah, actually after I posted to Instagram, I went ahead and added the horns, the tusks, and uh, a little bit of zebra stripe. So there's that. Um, here's what it's going to look like when it's done, sort of. No, that's better. And oh, and then today I randomly generated window and garden. So, whoops. I'm gonna show you this way. I'm stitching this at ninety degrees. Um in my last video, oh, I just realized that I did not breathe. Okay, I'm gonna go get it quick. So, confession, I still don't edit my videos, and on any other day, I would have just stopped this video and started over from the beginning, because I just don't, I don't, I don't know how to edit videos. Plus, it's just so easy to record here and then upload right away. So, what you get is totally fresh. Alright, I showed this in my last video. The color, um, the blue is getting washed out in the video. This is much more of a, it's much brighter in person. Um, this is Window and Garden by Little Room in the Attic. And in my last video, I mentioned that um, there was, there's a Floss 3890, DMC 3890, that you can only find in the, in the, um, Packs, the big packs of new released colors like new as of 2013 so I really don't know why DMC isn't selling them individually yet like there must be some good reason maybe like to make that sort of a business decision but I I don't know it's annoying anyway um, the same person who helped me um, decide to stitch this at 90 degrees, offered to send me her spare 3890. So that's amazing. Thank you so much. Um, she goes by the Grateful Thread and she doesn't make videos, but she's on Instagram. And um, so I'll link her below too, but. So what a lifesaver. Just what a good person to have in my life. Um, okay. 
So today I added pink. I added the pink flowers. Boop. And right there. So there's one doing garden. That does it for whips. Now I made some purchases online. Um, so let me t let me just say a little bit about purchases. I am putting myself on hold. I will not purchase any more charts after my birthday, which is next month. And I've been patiently waiting to buy my favorite Amy Mitten design, which is mystery number 1018. It comes only as a kit, so it's an intim intimidating price. But looking back on it, I really should have just gone and bought it right then and there because then I could just be stitching it this whole time and not buying a whole bunch of little kits or uh, charts and stuff. Um, so I really, I have, I have so much to stitch um, between now and ever. So I am putting myself on a chart purchase timer. I just need a timeout. Um, I do need to buy some supplies for some some of my charts that I already have. Um, and I did make a few purchases. So I will show you what I purchased online first. I purchased, um, I made a purchase at 123stitch.com. I found this kit, not, I keep saying kit, I'm sorry. This is a chart. I found this chart. I thought it was really funny and I think my husband's really gonna like it. So I decided to buy it because I'm looking for more smalls in my life. I just have so many huge projects going on that I need some kind of small victory. I'm sure you know what that, I'm sure you know that feeling. So I got this. Um, it comes with the button and the charm, the button eye and the little charm. And I decided to get this 28 count dapple cashel linen. And that color is pretty true. So this is dapple. It's very gray. I like the modeling. I think that's going to go well, you know, I think that's going to go well with my little my funny little turkey. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm gonna put this. Okay. In my last video, I showed a prairie schooler farmer design that I had picked up for my brother. I'm scrapping that idea. It just wasn't working. It wasn't jiving. Um, but this has always reminded me of my brother. So. I decided to go for it and instead of um, instead of those words at the bottom right now it says and God made the livestock according to their kind which I think is beautiful and I love it personally but what I wanted to do what I've always wanted to do for my brother is incorporate the um, so God made a farmer poem by Paul Harvey uh, it was made famous by a Ford commercial I believe um, it's really, it's a really touching commercial actually, if you just want to Google it, um, it's really pretty. So anyway, I got this and I decided to get the fabric that I need, which is 32 count Legacy Belfast Linen. Um, it's a bit more yellow in color, or in person, it's like, um, uh, yeah, it's just, it's a little bit more yellow than what it's showing up here. But I also decided to buy six fancy flosses. Actually, I'm not gonna show that one right now. Five are um, specifically for this chart. They're all classic color works. Okay. So I mentioned in one of my other videos that, um, that a lot of people are doing floss clubs and um, fabric clubs, and that idea appeals to me for sure. But um, 
I, I want a little bit more control. So I want to buy my own, um, just spend like, to spend that amount of money on flosses that I select myself. Uh, like regularly or semi-regularly. But what ended up happening is I was just hoarding um, all of that pretend money for my birthday purchase. And I decided that I really should just allow myself to get a few fancy flosses. So I did. So here they are. That's what I got. And they will come in handy. I also got, um, I also got a Classic Color Works Cloud. Um, this almost matches my wall, as you can see. It's a very bright blue. On the website, the picture looks very gray. So I was disappointed with this color. But it's not, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's the website's fault. Like this is just a this is just a problem that I've been running into with fancy flosses in general. Um, I don't have a local needle workshop, so I have to buy online if I want anything fancy. All I have around me is like Michaels and Joann's and Walmart. Those are the only stores that. Oh, I think I do have Hobby Lobby. Um, anyway, they only sell DMC. They're not gonna sell Classic Color Works or any kind of silks at all. Um, so I've just, I've had a lot of issues with purchasing floss online and it not being the color that I was expecting and therefore it won't work with the project that I purchased it for. And that's just really frustrating. Um, I, I, and I don't know how to work around it either. Um, I also purchased some some fabric for this design, Jumpin' Jack Frost. Originally I thought that this would look really nice on a kind of a smoky purple, like a moody purple fabric. And I still think maybe that's the case. But um, when I ordered this, this is 32 Count Storm Belfast Linen. This, um, see even on even on this video, it's a little bit purpler, purpley, purplier. Hmm, that's a word. That's an interesting word. Um, I think it's that's that's pretty good. It's pretty true, I, I guess, right there. Um, but anyways, it's it's just not gonna work for this design. Um, so I'm gonna have to find a different use for it, which I think I can because I really like this color and. I'm sure there's something out there, but again, this is kind of a this is kind of a problem like photographing colors and trying to order things online, order fancy things online. Uh, it's next to impossible to do perfectly. So when I went to Seattle, one of the only things I really wanted to make sure I did was to go to a local needle workshop. Um, because I don't have one here and I really wanted to buy a fabric for that piece in particular. So um, I was lucky enough to go to two needle workshops in Seattle um, and I really liked Thread Needle, um, Thread Needle Street and it's in one of Seattle's suburbs but the um, the shop owner there was so nice and she let me take out all these fabrics and lay them out and look at the whole thing before I bought it. Um, and I got something that I really wasn't expecting to get. It is, um, how do you say this, Wichelt Imports. Um, it's a hand dyed Jobelin. It's a, this one is actually, this is 28 count. But I got this for Jumpin' Jack Frost. And I think it's going to be really nice. Uh, it looks it looks super gray in the video. This is a really really pretty, uh, like a greenish sage. No, yellowish sage green. 
I don't know how I can, I don't think I can change the lighting, but anyways, it, it's a, it's kind of green, and, um, I just think that this fabric sort of looks like, um, light filtering through trees, and I think it's gonna look really well with, uh, it's gonna pair really well with this design. So, so I got that, um, at that little store, and then the other thing that I got in the store, because I needed to see it in person, was this floss. This is Weeks Dye Works Mocha. And I got this specifically for Adam, Adam's Menagerie. Like I needed a good skin tone that was sort of olive-y. Um, and this, this is a little bit dark, but what I've been finding with the Fancy Floss is, um, Actually, even with DMC, if I pick, if I pick a skein that looks perfect for what I have in mind, once I take out one or two strands of floss, it lightens up significantly. So um, this color, I think, when I use two strands, is going to be fitting for what I have in mind for his skin tone. So, I was really, really happy to go there. Um, okay, and then the other shop I went to was called the Needle Pointer. And this, hopefully, hopefully you can, hopefully that didn't cut out, but anyway, I went to the Needle Pointer. Um, and that was mostly canvas. Um, and I didn't know what to expect. I've never worked on, I've never worked with needlepoint in particular. Um, and it's, it's beautiful. Like you walk in, I really liked this store because every month they change out their designers. And um, they have all these beautiful um, printed canvases hanging up on their walls. And then they have um, some stitched models that you can look at. Um, and I thought, oh, no big deal. I might get into this. Maybe I'll just buy a small one and, and try it out. Uh, I had a serious case of sticker shock. Do any of you do um, needle needlepoint? It's, uh, it was just so expensive. Just the canvas with the printed design, like for something maybe this size, was fifty sixty dollars and it didn't come with anything that wasn't a kit that was just the pattern like the printed pattern on the canvas so um thankfully that that shop did have some flosses so i took a look around and i found i found a like a grayish a grayish white um, which of course it doesn't really show very well um, in the direct sunlight, but that's a pretty good representation right there. This is um, the Gentle Art Picket Fence. So this is more what I was going for when I ordered this cloud color. Um, and then I also ordered, or not ordered, I purchased three turquoise flosses. Now here's where it gets interesting. And this is exactly another reason why it's so hard to order online. Okay, this is this is all gentle art. Um, this is deep sea. It's a lovely dark turquoise. This is um, this is called peacock. It's a medium turquoise with some lovely variegation. But this is also peacock. These two are the same color. If you were ordering online and someone just picked at random, you know, which one they're going to throw in your package, it could be the totally wrong one. And then you're like, oh, well, now I have to find a totally different color. Like this, this is just kind of unacceptable to me. I did buy both of them because I love them, and I think that they are beautiful together, you know? They're obviously in the same color family, and 
um, I have a pattern in mind for all three of these together. But I'm just, I'm just really shocked and um, I just don't think I can order Gentle Art floss online anymore because it's mostly Gentle Art that has been um, just the wrong thing when I order it. And I think this is why. So, I just thought I'd share um, that if any, you know, if any of you are having the same problems that I am, like ordering, ordering flosses online, and it's just not at all what you are expecting, you know, this is why. It's totally, it's different colors. Okay, so I believe that that is it for purchases. Um, so, I was a very, very lucky recipient of a giveaway. Victorian Motto Sampler Shop had a, um, a Christmas in July, um, huge, just huge giveaways. Nancy is the owner of that. Uh, company and she hand dyes flosses and fabrics and she designs her own charts and um, I've I've seen so many of you open up your flosses and just rave about how beautiful they are and I, I've always sort of been curious about trying them you know um, I didn't want to I didn't want to just dive into it without really knowing what to expect but um, Nancy if you get on, if you go to Nancy's blog, I'll link it below. If you go onto Nancy's blog and you become a follower uh, to her blog posts, she has she she gives away so much. She is just such a generous person, and um, so anyways, she decided to just go all out for Christmas in July because she loves Christmas, and um, she excuse me, she had um, just a large number of giveaways. Actually, I've already talked about this in my last video. So, um, and you can go to her blog to see exactly what she was giving away and just uh, the magnitude of her generosity. So anyways, she had this giveaway. It was called um, My Favorite Things Giveaway, where you tell her uh, what your interests are and she sends you a surprise gift package from Santa Nancy and I won I was uh, I was shocked that I won I told her that um, my favorite color is purple but I also love blue green and red in that order and I told her um, what fabrics sizes I like to stitch on um, kind of a large range and I also told her that I like to stitch birds and flowers. So she sent me the most perfect little box of gifts. Um, first of all, she sent me this fabric, which doesn't have a name, but it's 32 count. And I don't know, I think this says a quarter yard. Uh, I'm trying to read her handwriting. It says a quarter yard. It's a beautiful um, neutral fabric. It's kind of got um, it's kind of got brown, like orangish brown modeling, but mostly it's cream. And as far as neutrals go, this is exactly what I would get for a neutral, um, like a, for a colorful neutral. Colorful neutral. I just made that up. Anyway, it's great. I like it, but um, she also sent me 12 skeins of floss, and I'm not going to show you all the names, but um, this, is kind of, this is kind of difficult. Let me just arrange myself here. She gave me all of these flosses, and they look really, really nice with the fabric that she included. So all these greens and blues, 
lots of blues, and then a purple, and a red. And isn't that pretty? And it goes so nicely with this fabric. It just looks really nice all together. Um, and then on top of that, if that wasn't enough, she also sent me one of her patterns. It's called Harmony. Um, yeah, browsing through her site, this was one of my favorite things. And I didn't even tell her, she just knew. She's Santa Nancy, that's why. So, um, I'm really excited to try all of this stuff. Um, the, the flosses really are beautiful. She has this one in particular. I'm just going to point out Old World Patina. This is exactly the color of Patina. Like if you're doing a, if you're doing a Statue of Liberty or something with green copper, like, you know, when copper turns green, this, this is the exact color that you need to stitch it with. It's beautiful. So, um, my idea is that I will use all of the colors to stitch this. Um, this, um, this sort of Quaker design, like, I think it, it would be gorgeous in one color, um, kind of like the model is stitched here, but, um, I'm thinking about doing the middle section in this, um, lovely dark blue, and then using the blues and greens just randomly, this is hard to display, um, randomly throughout here because there's like different, um, motifs that I can use and, um, if you watch Amy Loves Toads, she has a Quaker piece that has this sort of design and I really like the way she uses different colors. Like they're all, they're all sort of blues and grays. Um, but they look so, it's just so pleasing to look at when they're different colors, but they're all sort of like the same shade or the same tone, I guess. So that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking for doing this. And I don't know when I'll start it, but, um, but that's, that's my plan. Like anyway, so that was that. And then, um, so then I was also um, the very happy receiver of a wonderful care package from my good friend Mev at Mev Stitches in Paris. Um, hi Mev. Mev and I have really become good friends. Um, there's just people that you meet here that you just connect with instantly. And, and I, I think, you know, we, we just have a really good friendship right now. So anyways, um, Mev was stitching, is stitching, the Blackbird Designs Garden Club series. And she, she offered to send this, to pass this on to me when she was done. And um, I've, always, I've always really liked this one in particular of all the um, Garden Club series because it's so cute, the little, the little bird with the cherries. And she's finished it. So if you wanna see the finished work, um, head over to her channel. Um, and so <laughs> I knew she was sending this to me and I figured, you know, nothing travels alone. That's just how we are as stitchers, right? Like we can't help ourselves. Um, but I wasn't expecting like such, such a generous package. Um, so, um, Mev, I've decided to show everything because I think that's the only way that you'll really get a sense of how much I love everything that you sent in here. Uh, but it's all, it's not all stitching related. So, um, I was really on the fence about whether I should share everything, but, um, I'm going to, and I hope that's okay with you. Um, so I did, I got this, which, um, 
has an alphabet inside, which I'm excited to have because I needed another alphabet. Um, I didn't know that would have it. She also sent a, a cute little scissors fob, which I plan to stitch and turn into an ornament instead of a scissors fob, just because I think this might be um, too bulky for me for a scissors fob. But still, so happy to have something with the Eiffel Tower to remind me of Mev Stitches in Paris. Um, she also sent some beautiful pictures of Paris, some places in Paris, uh, with notes that I will keep to myself. So, love those. Um, she also sent me some flosses to go with the design. Um, this is the Gentle Art Ruby Slipper, um, which after my big rant earlier, thank you Mev for sending this along because I would have had anxiety about ordering it online and it not being right. So there's Ruby Slipper and she sent me some floss, so, I mean some silk, some beautiful silk. And um, these go, this goes really well with these colors already. So I'm, I'm planning to incorporate all of these. Like I can, I can mix silk, like I can mix silk with cotton, right? Do any of you do that in your designs? Like in your, when you're stitching stuff? Not like, I don't think I'm going to do, not combine them and stitch them together, but like, you know, silks with cottons. I think you know what I mean. Um, the best thing of all that she sent me is this bookmark. It's a beautiful bookmark that I'm so happy to have because it was stitched by her hand. So, and I am an avid reader, so I, this is going to be used all the time. But she gave me a book to put it to good use. And um, she has a French version, so um, I'm really excited to read this. It's the pillow book. Um, it totally falls into my interest range, so. Um, she sent me this beautiful um, hand-stitched little purse. Um, I am using it for my needlework things. I have my little scissors and my tin which I keep, whoops, I keep spare needle minders and needles and, um, what are these called? They're like, they pull the, they pull the floss underneath the loops, anyway, and a thread ripper, a seam ripper. Oh, by the way, just a side note, my friend helped me finish these needle minders when I was in Seattle. So these are the pins I showed you. And they turned out great as needle minders. We just snipped off the, we snipped off the things in the back and then she has a Dremel so uh, she was able to sand those down. And I used these like Hercules strength magnets. They're like trying to, to pull everything into them and into themselves but anyway so that, I keep that in this lovely little purse and and then lastly she sent me this very fun reusable bag which I have already put to good use because I I shop like I only use these when I go to stores uh, and I I went grocery shopping this morning so I, I already used it so thank you so much Mav I it was um, just overwhelming. I, I was not expecting that, like, that much. <laughs> but I'm so happy to have all of it, and I'm so happy to have your friendship, so, um, so thanks. Okay, um, really, I think that's it. My trip to Seattle um, was really nice. Um, it was so nice to see my friend again. We we don't see each other super often because we're always in different states. But um, 
Her name is Sarah Lambert, and um, I think she watches my videos now as well. So I was right to keep that mystery stitch a secret. Um, er, so the mystery stitch, I do post like little snippets on Instagram, so you can go to Instagram if you want. Speaking of Instagram, like Instagram is is a really great place for those of you who um, who don't make the videos but you still want to make some kind of connection with more than just one person at a time. Like, <clears throat> so I guess, yeah, this is just something that I want to say about making videos. Um, so since I started making videos, I have been making friends with so many of you um, who, who don't make videos. And um, it's... Th those are friendships that I would not have made if I weren't doing these videos. And um, I've already had some questions uh, from from those of you who are like on the fence. Well, I've been thinking about making videos. I'm not sure if I want to. Um, I'm not sure if I have enough to share, that kind of thing. Um, my encouragement is just go for it. Just, you know, if you're on the fence about making videos, just try to do it. Just just try. Um, you might not reach the people that you wanted to reach or that you felt like you had a connection to um, just by being um, someone who watches videos and not makes them. But, um, but people who... People will find you, like, people will find you and surprise you, and you'll make so many new connections that you never imagined you could make. Um, but anyways, what I was going to say about Instagram is that if you are, like, you're like, no way, I could never do the videos, but you kind of feel out of the loop a little bit, Instagram is an awesome place for those of you who feel a little bit out of the loop, like you do not connecting the way you want to connect, um, Instagram allows you to show your work too. Like you can show your work, you can exchange ideas with other people, other stitchers. Um, Facebook is okay, uh, but I I don't I don't like it as much. I'm I am on some of the Facebook groups, um, but I just I. I think it's a little bit uh, saturated because you have to be part of a group unless you're personally friends with other stitchers, which I'm not. I, I get a little bit weird about um, about sharing personal information and that kind of thing. Which, so for me, like making these videos was a huge leap of faith because I do not like to share personal information. Um, I... Uh, yeah. So, <clears throat> why am I talking about this? Um, because I recently watched um, Rachel, Mrs. Fensel, the cross-stitch counselor, and she just went to a retreat and she kind of brought up the same things that um, people at the retreat were talking about, how they don't feel like they have anything to contribute to floss tube, and that's, that's why they don't make the videos. you should you should give yourself more credit and have faith and make a video if it's really pulling you like if your heart is really pulling you to make a video just make a video it'll be well received and maybe not by the people you think it will but people who have your same interests will find you otherwise go to instagram <laughs> okay i think that's enough I have to cut it off here. Um, I have to go pick up my son. But yeah, I know this was kind of a rambly video. Um, but it was now or never. And now we're at the end of the video where I still have no idea how to cut it off. <laughs> so <clears throat> until next time, take care. <laughs>